Howdy, folks. I'm a bear that's entirely composed of bees. I'm getting out of here. <laughs> and here's some honey. Our first letter is titled, Am I a jerk for trying to help my boyfriend with his cleanliness? You know, I had some pretty big expectations walking into this letter, and they were subverted. Mm -hmm. Hello. I'm a 20-year-old female, and I live with my boyfriend of two years. I moved into his condo and have been living with him for the last four months. Cleaning has become an issue. Throughout our relationship, he has always had a regimented cleaning schedule, and his place was always spotless before I moved in. But it's gotten progressively worse to the point that it's usually gross. Every day when he comes home from work, he puts his feet up and relaxes for 15 minutes, and then he cleans for 20 afterwards. But the fact that he comes home and just wants to chill afterwards rubs me the wrong way, especially since I spend all day in classes and working part-time, and I don't have time for that. So I usually push him to clean right away, which ends up making him frustrated and not cleaning. And when he's cleaning, he might do the kitchen and bathroom in 30 minutes, but he's so ineffective, I could do it in 15 to 20, but he doesn't want to listen to me on how he could clean better. He just says to let him clean and stop telling him how to do it. The place now looks messy like a frat house, and it's because he's not cleaning. And this weekend, I was so mad with him. I visited my parents for the weekend, and when I came back, the place was spotless, like it used to be. He said that it was finally clean because he could do it without criticism, which he says he does not want or need, and he doesn't want to hear it. I feel like he's blaming me. He says he feels like my actions are preventing him from doing his household duties. He's even scheduled us a couples therapy over this, but I think that's over the top. I just hate watching him clean because he does it all wrong, and he shouldn't be relaxing before he cleans. I don't know what to do. It makes my skin feel like it's on fire when I see him work. Am I the jerk? All right, folks, what do you think, jerk or not the jerk? Jerk. There's no one right way to clean. Yeah, I mean, I think in this particular case, OP, it's better to have someone clean on their own terms and in their own way if they they can get it done and they can make it spotless than to sit and micromanage over someone's shoulder and tell them how to clean. Because that's the surest way to not get someone to clean is by micromanaging over them. It's just kind of one of those things. People are going to clean the way they want to clean. And if he wants your tips and advice, then he'll ask for it. Unsolicited opinions are unsolicited. Anyhow, take care and good luck. You're the jerk. Stop trying to fix or change him the way he does things. Like, seriously, stop. Our next letter is titled, Am I a jerk for refusing not to sleep in Sailor Moon bed sheets? But there's a typo here. He means to sleep in Sailor Moon sheets. He does not want to sleep in Sailor Moon sheets. That's the issue at hand here. Background. I'm a 29-year-old male, and I've been married to my wife, a 28-year-old female, for five years. And we have a child together, a two-year-old female. She does all the housework. Occasionally, I might lend a hand, but she cleans, she cooks, and she does all those good things. I frequently tell my wife that I'm grateful for her hard work and she decorates the house as she sees fit, mainly in pink. And I do not have a say in this, nor do I particularly care. We have a lovely home, which is in no way because of my input. She takes pride and often buys new bedding in various patterns or themes. Normally, this bedding is pink, which I don't particularly like, but I wouldn't complain. She recently bought Sailor Moon bedding. I am no hardcore anime person, but isn't this anime for 13-year-old girls? I'm going to sleep in bedding with these stupid princess pictures and rabbits and cats. I feel like a line has to be drawn somewhere. I asked her how she would feel if I bought Thomas the Tank Engine bedding, but she said that this isn't the same. I got quite angry about it. My dad would roll in his grave if he knew I was sleeping in little girl's bedding. She put the bedding on anyways, and I'm threatening to sleep downstairs until it's removed. 
She's angry and says, "I'm being childish." You childish? No. <laughs> The opposite of childish, you refuse to do childish things. That makes you adult. Edit. For those of you asking, we both jointly own the house. However, I'm the primary income for our family. My wife is a stay-at-home mom. And edit. Sorry for the double negative in my title for refusing to sleep in Sailor Moon bed sheets. All right, folks. What do you think, jerk or not the jerk? A bit of a jerk. Like we all have our preferences, but it seems like he's more concerned with his dead dad's opinion than with his wife's happiness. Yeah, I mean, I think that's really the crux of the issue here. He seems like he's too worried about what people are gonna think of him for sleeping in this bedding. I think that this is、uh, again like just a preference here. I don't think that this is a reasonable request on his behalf. He's making it out to be more of an issue than it really should be. I feel. I'm 28, and whenever I visit my dad, he makes me use the spare room for me, and more than often, use bed sheets that my nephews used to sleep in. I slept in Toy Story, Cars, and Paw Patrol bedding. What I don't do now is throw a fit and threaten to sleep downstairs until it's threatened, until it's changed, because you know I'm an adult and bedding is bedding. Unless she's fitting your bed with freaking、uh, symbolism that is for <laughs> bad people, print, print sheets. <laughs> you're you're the jerk for being so、uh, precious about bedding. <laughs> <laughs> I was I was pretty thrown off by that first comment. I'm like, ah, yes,、um, bad people. <laughs> that would be a good reason not to sleep in bedding. Very very good reason. <laughs> And our final letter is titled, "Am I a jerk for ruining my friend's wedding photos by wearing glasses?" Of course. Those glasses wear people's. They always ruin everything. I'm a 30-year-old female, and I was a bridesmaid at my best friend Stella's wedding a few days ago. I'm very nearsighted, so I wore glasses to the wedding. Once I got there, Stella approached me and asked me why I wasn't wearing my bridesmaid outfit. Confused, I asked what she meant. She told me that glasses weren't part of the bridesmaid outfit and told me to take them off. I told her that I needed them to see, but Stella just said that it was her wedding, and she accused me of trying to draw attention to myself by being the only one wearing glasses, especially in the wedding photos. Now, some of my other friends who attended the wedding have been asking why things are so tense between Stella and me. Some agree that it was ridiculous for Stella to ask me not to wear glasses when I need them to see, but others said that I should have been willing to compromise since it was Stella's wedding and Stella really wanted good wedding photos. Also, I do wear contact lenses, but I couldn't wear them because colored contact lenses were already part of the bridesmaid outfit, and I couldn't wear both colored lenses and my actual lenses. All right, folks. What do you think, jerk or not the jerk? Not the jerk. Anyone who would say that something someone needs for their disability ruins their wedding photos is automatically the jerk. I think that this is like it's better to have someone be able to see and enjoy a、mm -hmm. wedding than to strive for 100% perfection of a certain aesthetic. And I think that Stella's being nearsighted. Farsighted? A, a, a visual joke of some form or another here. Please insert your own visual joke. <laughs> She's being short-sighted. That's the one we're looking for. <laughs> About the situation, she really should be accommodating her friend and allowing her to wear lenses. I mean, the wear glasses because that's what she needs. She could be bumping around. It could be a danger to her if she can't. Get around without injuring herself or knocking things over. So I think that this is a perfectly reasonable ask for、uh, OP. Anyhow, take care and good luck. Not the jerk. It's unreasonable for her to expect you to be unable to see for the day. A reasonable compromise would be to take the glasses off for the fo posed photos, but even that seems silly to me. All right, folks, it is tea time. Grab your beverages of choice. I have some tea. Amber has some water. Let me know what you think I have for a beverage.、Uh, are you going to tell us a joke? Certainly. Oh, Amber has a joke off the top of her head. Why did the vacationers flock to New England?
Because there's no better place to live. Because it has the main attraction. <laughs> I suppose it does. I suppose it does. And I have Mega Mint Tea. All right, folks, that's all the time we have for today. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, consider giving me a like. And if you didn't, consider giving me a dislike. Thanks so much for watching. Happy Monday. I hope you're all having a great start to your week. And I will see you all tomorrow. Bye. <laughs> what, what would a bear that was made up of entirely bees eat? Would they just eat honey? Which would is a bit ironic. Would they defend themselves against themselves? These are questions that I need to know the answers to. Who wins? A bear that's entirely made up of bees? Or a bear? <laughs> these, these are the questions that we need answered, Amber. You're a scientist. Please, please tell us your scientific <laughs> opinion on, on who wins in a fight. I'm a physicist. I, uh... Well, that, yeah, yeah, well, we, we, we know you're a physicist. Get on with a science talk. My expertise is nuclear radiation. Get on with a science talk, science lady. Well, you see, <laughs> lead 210. No, 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 no. The bears. The question's the bears, Amber. You need to know. We need to know the answer. Would a bear or would a, a bear entirely composed of bees win in a fight? Go ask a biologist. <laughs> well, there you have it. Scientists can't answer these questions. <laughs> <laughs> the wrong kind of scientist for this question. Yeah, well, all science is apparently broken because you can't answer this question. Sorry, you failed science. You failed science entirely as a field. We all know the real answer. The bear made of bees is the one that's going to win because it can split apart and then sting the other bear. So it wins by default. Not the jerk. It's unreasonable for her to expect you to be able to unsee, unsee. <laughs> <laughs> reading wins. Maybe I should just start reading with my glasses off. Blur, 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 blur. Uh, it, it didn't work. I see a lot of fuzz. It's very fuzzy. When I'm not wearing my glasses, all I see are the police. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, Brian, you're ruining the YouTube video. I'm ruining the aesthetic of the YouTube video.